In this video, I would like to talk about how a man can maintain or recover sexual vigor. Erectile dysfunction trends with age. 40% of men in their 40s, 50% of men in their 50s, and so on. What this means is that if we live long enough, the loss of satisfying erections and a healthy sex life, also known as impotence, is pretty much guaranteed. That is unacceptable, so what can we do? First, let's discuss the mechanics of erections. Erections happen in two phases. First, arteries bring blood into the penis. Second, smooth muscle cells relax, putting pressure on the veins so that blood can't get out again. Problems with blood not getting in means an erection won't happen in the first place. We can call this arterial impotence. If we were inflating a tire, arterial impotence would be the hand pump is broken and no air inflates into the tire. Problems with blood getting out again means that the erections aren't as strong and or don't last as long as we'd like. We can call this venous impotence. If we were inflating a flat tire, venous impotence would be a leak in the tire, so no matter how much you pump the tire up, the tire stays flat. While arterial impotence is an issue for some, it is more rare and usually associated with diabetes and heart disease. For arterial impotence, you may wish to first consider a cardiovascular protocol, including our albidextrin and metacardium products. For more information on these, please watch our cardiovascular protocol video on our video page. The more common form of erectile dysfunction is what I call venous impotence. Blood gets into the penis, but the blood leaks out again. Erections are softer and don't last very long. As men age, we lose the smooth muscle cells that keep the blood in the penis. Yes, the male penis shrinks with age. When approximately 15% of these cells have been impacted, the veins can't be fully compressed and erections fail. The remaining smooth muscle cells try to compensate by making lots of nitric oxide, the vasodilator that triggers erections, and this works for a while, but there is a danger here. Nitric oxide converts into peroxynitrite and ONOOCO2, which I call the ONO molecule. Both of these nitrogen compounds cause even more smooth muscle cells to die, and so the compensation is short-lived and counterproductive. It's a last-ditch Hail Mary for erections. Some men choose pharmaceutical or nutritional interventions to increase nitric oxide, but again, this increases toxic peroxynitrites and the ONO molecules, so it's not a good long-term solution. A good erectile dysfunction protocol should do three things. One, Increase the smooth muscle cells, that is, regrow the cells in the penis that were lost. We can do this with protocols like shockwave therapy. It is, however, important that we keep our testosterone levels high, otherwise the stem cells that shockwave therapy recruits may turn into fat rather than smooth muscle cells. We don't want fat in the penis, we want the muscle cells there. Exercise is the best way to increase testosterone. Two, we want to increase nitric oxide. While we don't want super high levels of nitric oxide, we don't want to be nitric oxide deficient either. While there are many supplements that can raise nitric oxide, one overlooked protocol is sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. 3. We want to get rid of any peroxynitrite and ONO molecules as soon as they're made to protect the smooth muscle cells we still have. Again, sodium bicarbonate comes to the rescue. It breaks down both peroxynitrite and ONO molecules. So, baking soda. Simple inexpensive, harmless. I discovered this quite by accident. While I was doing cancer research, I injected myself with sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda, subcutaneously on either side of my groin at the top of my inner thighs where the lymph vessels are. This is one of the main protocols I like to use with cancer, that is increasing sodium bicarbonate in the body. I was looking for the maximum concentration of bicarbonate that can be slowly injected. I tried 8.4%, but it was too concentrated and was uncomfortable. It turns out 4.8% is well tolerated. Once the experiment was concluded, I went to sleep, only to be woken up multiple times during the night with strong and persistent erections. It was such an extreme and unusual experience that I had to do some research, and that was when I found out about the connections between bicarbonates, nitric oxide, and erections. I don't suggest, however, that people inject sodium bicarbonate into themselves. Instead, I have an oral formulation that you can try. It is called bicarbamet. And unlike other oral bicarbonates, it won't alkalinize the stomach, damaging digestion. Yes, you can take a spoonful of baking soda mixed in water to raise your bicarbonate levels, but this will also wipe out your protein digestion, so it's not a good trade-off.
You can also take hot baths with two cups of baking soda. But the way that I like to take bicarbonates is with our oral bicarbonate product, as I mentioned. It is designed to open up in the small intestine, not the stomach, so that it does not damage digestion. Rather, bicarbonates delivered to the small intestine improve the enzyme function of the small intestine and improve digestion. So, to recap, there are three reasons you might want to do bicarbonates for your sexual health as a man. One, you're in your 20s. You still have great erections, but want to keep having them for decades to come. Bicarbonates can protect the smooth muscle cells of your penis so that you are sexually active for your entire life. Two, you take drugs or supplements to improve erections. Bicarbonates are even more important now as the higher levels of nitric oxide you may be generating by supplements or drugs are dangerous to the smooth muscle cells you're going to need for future erections. Three, you've lost some erection strength and want to halt the loss where it is. Again, bicarbonates to the rescue. Learning about the relationship between bicarbonates and erections was an unexpected but welcome discovery. Of course, bicarbonates do much more for the body than just erections, but erections are important too. Take care.